Did you know that as much as 61% of koalas in some places are infected by chlamydia? How'd they get that? Stick around and find out. G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And today we're back at Southern Koala Rescue in the Adelaide Hills. And I'm here with Asher, one of the poor burnt koalas in care with these guys. And what we're here to talk to you about is koalas and chlamydia. Now, chlamydia is obviously just one of the problems koalas face. Over the last 100, 200 years, koalas have been hunted, dogs attack them, cars hit them, they've lost their homes. But today, one of their biggest issues is disease. And chlamydia is probably at the first and foremost of those. Especially at a facility like this, where they've got multiple koalas in care, koalas are coming into care and going out of care, we have to be really careful. Between every enclosure, your boots have to be cleaned, you've got to make sure you don't carry soil from one enclosure to another enclosure, because it can be very highly contagious. Some of the reasons why it's so important we keep koalas chlamydia free is the symptoms include blindness, they can include renal failure, and infertility. Eventually, it causes death. So it's a pretty serious disease in poor koalas. Worryingly, chlamydia is found throughout the entire mainland population of koalas. In some regions, like Brisbane and southeast Queensland, it's around 51% of koalas are infected. And down south in Gippsland in southeast Victoria, it's as much as 61%. So it's pretty prevalent. And when you bear in mind that it can cause fertility issues and all these things, it's a pretty serious disease. Now, one of the big questions that we get when we talk about koalas and having chlamydia is how did they get chlamydia? And it's not how you might think. You see, just like people carry chlamydia, koalas do as well, but it's very different strains. The strain of chlamydia carried and spread by human beings is chlamydia trachomatis. Koalas, on the other hand, carry a strain called chlamydia pectorum, which is actually the strain that we also find in livestock. So the current theory is that it's probably made its way from European livestock during early settlement, made its way into the soil, and somehow koalas have got it from that. So uh, it's not a pathogen that these guys are used to and it affects them a lot more than it would affect things like sheep and cattle. And obviously, it's become a big issue. Currently, the only thing we can do to treat chlamydia in koalas is when they come into care to give them antibiotics. And the issue with antibiotics is koalas are really, really reliant on gut flora. They actually need all these little bugs living in their stomach to digest this stuff, gum leaves. And antibiotics can really knock that. So while we have to give it to them, it's the only way to treat it, it uh, means that it's not a simple solution. Often them, we've got to keep them in care and rehabilitate them from that. Fortunately, there is scientists out there working on a vaccine and it's had some trials and in some places it's looking like it could work. In 2016, a study was done in Queensland and the Moreton Bay region where 21 koalas were collected and vaccinated for chlamydia. Six of these koalas already had chlamydia and had only minor signs of it and the rest were all tested free. Six months later, those 21 koalas were caught and all of them were chlamydia free. So the other ones didn't catch it, the uh, sick ones got better and it looked like it was working. The issue is, nine months later, several of these koalas were retrapped and tested positive for chlamydia. So we had a vaccine that worked, but it didn't have a long-term effect. And uh, unfortunately, there's a practicality issue. If this is gonna be a short-term vaccine, we can't go and catch every koala in the country every six months to 12 months and vaccinate them all again. So it's promising, but there's a lot more work to be done. The other issue with the vaccine is the current vaccine only works on about three strains of chlamydia pecorum. And here in Australia, we have 10. So while it might work in one area, might not work in another. One thing that hopefully when we get this vaccine working better and it can work on a wider scale, is we could work towards having what we call herd immunity, where enough of the koalas are vaccinated that the disease doesn't have a chance to keep spreading. So even if we miss one, the fact that all the koalas around him are vaccinated, he's not gonna get it from them. Until then, the main thing we can do about chlamydia is to basically look after our koalas. If you ever see a koala acting unusual, sitting on the ground for an extended period of time, looking sick, call a wildlife carer. Folks like Southern Koala Rescue down here in the Adelaide Hills, groups like Port Macquarie Koala Hospital, these guys are doing really fantastic work, bringing these koalas into captivity, treating them and releasing them again and giving them the best shot they can. So while koalas do carry chlamydia, while it's gonna be an issue for them for the foreseeable future, all hope's not lost. So there you have it, guys. I hope you found that interesting. Now you know how koalas got chlamydia and just how bad it is. And uh, I hope you've liked the video. On top of that, I hope you take the time to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook. The last thing that you could do for us, which would be a great favor, would be to check out the great folks at Southern Koala Rescue. Check them out on Facebook. They've been kind enough to come here and let us film at their facility and share these amazing animals with you. They do great work and they've got a couple of fundraisers going to build bigger, more release enclosures and things like this. So you can certainly do something to help. 
Other than that, guys, check on back next week. There's lots more videos coming. And as always, be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care.